Hello everybody. Today I am going to be going over how to play Pork in Tough Love Arena. I'm going to be trying to cover him from a beginner entry level up to advanced techniques that you can use with him. So in this guide, I will be using some number pad notation whenever I talk on occasion. So to help explain what numpad notation is, this is a number pad right here, represented 1 through 9. And these are in reference to which way you are holding. Now in Tough Love Arena, there is no down or up, so you only have forward, back, and standing still which are represented by 4, 5, and 6. So the other numbers are pretty much irrelevant for this game. So numpad notation always assumes that you are facing your opponent. So if I say that something is a 5S or just an S, that would mean you hit your special button while standing still. If I call something 4S, that would be moving away from your opponent and the special button. So 5S with pork is the throw, and 4S would be chop. 6S would be while moving towards your opponent, which is the jump attack. Lights are L, H is heavy, and S is special. And if I say that you RC, I'm referring to Rapid Cancel, which is this. Rapid Cancel is done by pressing 6S while you're in the middle of hitting an opponent with a move. So, to start off with, we've got his light attack, which is a good tool whenever you're up close. It's got pretty short range, doesn't hit from here, but it'll hit from right there. As you can see, if we turn on dummy blocking and we just mash jab, you can get four jabs in from point blank. And you're plus one on block each time, as you can see in the top left. You're plus one after you jab on block. Which means you can jump in and you can get three jabs. If you're just mashing jab. And then you can go into this if you want some chip. Pork's next basic button is heavy, which has much better range than jab. Heavy hits all the way out here. Jab will not even come close. And heavy can be cancelled into either another heavy, which will give you an uppercut, or if you hit special, it cancels into palm. Palm is minus 6 on block, so if it's spaced properly, they can't punish it. If you're up in their face, then if you cancel into palm, their jab will be able to hit you, because jab has 5 frames of startup. There you go. So yes, uh, Palm is not safe if you're within jab range, however, as long as you're outside of jab range, they can't hit you with like a heavy, because if we look at frame data, 
So if you look at the startup frames, jabs have five frames of startup. This is true for every character. Light attacks have five frames of startup. And if we look at the form of frame data that is provided, startup is equal to the number of frames in the startup animation. So to punish something that's minus eight, you need seven frames of startup or less. Five frame is the fastest move in the game, being every character's light attack, and also throws. So that means that you can be punished at point blank range with a throw or a jab. But that's it. Nothing else can punish you. So as long as you're spaced, you'll be fine. If you do the second hit of heavy on block, you're minus 20 as you can see. Which means they can punish with just about whatever they want. But any normal jab or a heavy can punish you and you will take a lot of damage. Even Noodle's uh, fist light attack can punish you, so Noodle can get a full combo on you if you do the heavy. Every character can get a full combo on you if you do heavy on block. So an important thing to do whenever you're playing Pork is whenever you land this heavy, you need to watch and see if you're landing on block or on hit. Also important is that even if you're up in their face and you get a heavy, as long as you don't do anything afterwards, they can only throw you. They cannot actually punish you because you are minus four, which means they can act before you, but if they do any kind of attack, it won't come out. So they can punish with a throw, but that's it as long as you're blocking. So if we look at specials, we've got 5S, which is a command throw. So if you're up close, you can see that he's blocking. So you can throw him. Whenever you land the command throw, you can go for a couple different things. You can go for HH6S, which looks like this. And that does 378 damage. Or you can go for the 5SH4S, which does 290 damage, but knocks them down in front of you. And what that means is that you can apply pressure. As you can see, you cannot do two heavies and then a 4S. However, this is a reset, which we'll talk about for the more advanced section. Another really important move is the chop. This is minus seven on block, which means if you space it, you'll still be safe even if they block it. But up close, they can punish with jab or throw. Similar to your palm cancel. What Chop is really good for is it has armor, which means if they go for jab or any other attack, you will hit them, and it'll be okay. You'll still get to go through with your combo. So if you land a chop, you can go for this basic combo to start off with. So at the absolute start of the string would be a chop, and then the next level up is light, and then heavy. So from Ascending Order, you can go and chop into Light, Heavy, Heavy, and then 6S. And that will work from anywhere on the screen. 
And you can even delay it a bit. If you want to push them further away. So you can wait to do the jump, and that'll put them further away from wherever you were. It'll put them closer to the corner that they're on the side of. That is the easiest combo that you can do with this character. If you land a heavy, you just go for another heavy, and then you jump. 283 damage. That's almost a third of their health gone because they got hit by a heavy. If they hit, get hit by a light before that, that's 311 damage, which is a third of their health. And then if you get the full chop combo here, 379. Almost 400. And life bars are only 1000 in this game. You can also get jump-ins into this combo, which still does a third of their health. So, another important thing to note with the jump attack here. Let's start talking about jump attack. So, the jump attack has 11 frames of startup, 12 active frames, and 23 frames of recovery. So, if we look at a blocked jump attack, we see that you are still plus 10. So you are completely free to do whatever you want after you land that. It's all your mix-up once you land a jump attack. However, jump attack is very slow and pretty easy to anti-air. So if they're ready for it, let's see if I can get this. They can anti-air you. Now, beef isn't the best example because beef's only real anti-air is jump attack and also heavy. Heavy is inconsistent, but can be done. Looks like that makes the frame advantage counter kind of wonky. But yeah, it's really easy to react to a jump, so if they're ready for it, you're gonna get hit every single time. So it's important not to jump unless you absolutely need to, or if you're in a mix-up situation. Now the nice thing about Orc's jump is that it acts as an anti-air. So if they jump at you, and then you jump, you will win and you will spike them out of the air. It also has armor on jump-ins. So jumping is a valid anti-air. The other thing that you can do if someone jumps at you is go for chop. Chop will also knock people down out of the air, has armor against air attacks. If we look here, it's armored against air attacks from frame 1. So as long as you get it out, you will at least not get hit. And if they go for another jab, and you only just got it started right before you got hit, you'll still be able to be good. However, if you start it up too late, it does still have 20 frames of startup. So if you start up the chop too late, Let's see if I can show an example here. There you go. I will be protected from the jump in, but if they don't do anything, then they will block the chop and you will be minus seven, which means they are free to punish you. So chop is still a amazing anti-air. It can do that, which I'll go into in more depth during the advanced section. But, at the very least, if you do it early, it'll knock them down right in front of you, which means you can go for your mix-ups. So that covers the absolute basics of this character. At its core, you're gonna be trying to keep people at about this range, 
looking for heavies. If it's on block and you're at this range, you cancel into your special. So this is what you'll want to do for some matchups. But the true goal of pork is to get right up in people's face. Once you're in this range, pork is very scary. Because if you get your full jab combo, that's great. Now once people are in the corner, they should be really scared. Because if you get the knockdown, and you're right up in their face, you, you have a couple options. You can either grab them whenever they wake up, or you can go for a meaty jab whenever they wake up, which means they have to block whenever they wake up, like so. And you're plus 10 there because of the way meaties work. A meaty is just an attack that is active while they are getting up from being knocked down. It forces them to block, otherwise they'll get hit. So you can go for a grab, which will grab them if they block. Or you can go for a meaty attack with any of your attacks. And the thing that's so scary about Porks mix up in the corner is that with any other character, if they try to grab you on wake up with a normal grab, they throw you out of the corner. And now I'm in the corner. But whenever Pork has you in the corner and he grabs you with his command throw, now you're still in the corner. So it's really scary because you have to find a way to get out and you have to guess right against Spork every time, otherwise you're going to take a lot of damage. Because the command throw can deal a lot of damage here in the corner. I like to just go for a uh, heavy, heavy light while they're in the corner, if I get a command throw, because that sets them up for a reset again here, and you are still plus here if you go for the uh, heavy, heavy light. You're still in advantage, so you get to choose what you want to mix them up with. Uh, the goal with this character is to just get in people's face and get the mix-ups going with either your grab or your chop. To ki if they choose to... The reason you would go for chop after you knock somebody down is because if they if they guess that you're going to grab them on wake up and try to attack out of it, chop will armor through it and give you the full combo here in the corner. This is a uh, a loop that I'll go over later. But yeah. If you think that they're going to try to attack on Wake Up, then you can go for Chop. If I can get it set up here. There, so you'll armor through it. But if they do nothing, you can go for your Command Grab. And that's the whole guessing game once they're in the corner. So as for advanced things with this character, you have delayed punishes like that. So your optimal anti-air is that right there. You have to delay chop just the right amount so that they can't block it and it'll still hit them right as they're landing, leaving them standing up and then you can get your full combo. However, if you do chop a bit too early, you're still fine, you'll get the knockdown right in front of you, and there's no problem with getting the knockdown right in front of you, because you can go for your mix-ups once they're knocked down. However, once again, be warned, if you do it too late, you're in a bad spot. Now that we're talking about some more advanced tactics with pork, we can start talking about what you do with your meter. So, the biggest combo that you can do with this character looks like this. 
That's the biggest combo you can get from mid screen, which is 555 damage. And then in the corner. You can get 600, somewhere around there. I assume if I went for a heavy palm instead of a light heavy there at the end, it would have connected and done a bit more damage, but you get the idea. However, generally, I don't like to use both bars in my combos because damage scaling is pretty rough. If you only do one loop of the chop combo, it still does 535 if they're in the corner there, which isn't that much less considering use get to save a full bar, you did over half of their health with one bar, which means if you were to touch them again and use another bar, they would die. So I like to only use one bar in combos, unless it's going to kill. If you know that you can end the round with both your bars, then go for it. So another important thing is that you can cancel off of anything. So if you're out here and you land a stray heavy and you go into the heavy, then you can go into the combo just from there. And then if you carry them into the corner, you get to start up a mix-up. Another important thing to note is that your meter will allow you to be safe on block if you so, if you're playing against Noodle, for example, and he's zoning you out with his heavies, which are longer range, they'd hit you from here for sure. Somewhere around here, you'd be just outside the range. So if you're able to work your way in against Noodle, and then you land a heavy, you're in your heavy range, what you can do is you can go for double heavy, and then you can cancel, and that puts you right up here in front of his face. You can even cancel after the uppercut. And if you cancel after the uppercut, you're still really plus. Plus 17 here. Which means you can go and you can either grab them, or you can chop them, or you can jab them. The same mix-ups as if you were just... If you had just gotten a knockdown. So... That's really nice for trying to get in against people. And then obviously there's burst. Burst isn't a bad thing to be using your meter on. You just need to make sure you don't get baited. An important thing to note is that you cannot cancel chop on block. You can, however, cancel your palm, which means if you're playing really safe and you're just buffering your, your heavy into palm, hoping that they'll walk into it, if you do land it, you can walk up and get your jab, and then you can do your combo there. It depends on the range you're at, though. So, like, there it didn't quite work. Oh. So, yeah. If you're at, like, the absolute maximum range of the palm, and you get the cancel, then what you can do is just go for the heavy heavy. And that'll pull you in, get you the uppercut, get the combo going. Another thing you can do with your meter, if you want extra corner carry, is something like this. And that'll carry them almost full screen. You could also do something like this.
and go for a reset in your combo. You can reset it there, or you can also go for the grab. And you can get a lot of damage out of that as well, and as you can see, that carried them to the opposite corner of the screen. So that's another option that you can use your meter for. The final thing that I want to talk about with this character is mid-combo resets. So, you know that the most advanced combo is chop into, uh, chop into light heavy heavy stuff. You know, that kind of combo stuff. That's my recommended combo route. So, if you want to get some extra damage, but play a bit riskier, what you can do is after you get your loop started and you get your chop here, we stop and we think. We're plus nine right here. So, that means that instead of doing the rest of our combo, we can go for a grab and then a mix up after we get the grab and do your heavy, heavy jump attack or your heavy chop. So that's one option. You can do chop and then grab them. And you want to delay it a bit to make it just a little bit harder to react to. Or, optionally, as the mix-up here, you can go for another chop. So, same mix-up as if they're knocked down. If you stop your loop here, and then go for a mix-up, it's once again the same as if they're knocked down. So, what this means is that if you land this all the way out here, they're in another mix-up here. It's the same th same basis as here. If you were to uh, if you were to cancel that on block, you need to wait a bit because otherwise you grab a whiff like it did there. And see the problem with this reset specifically in the pork mirror match so if i just go for chop and then try to throw immediately after it'll lose to the other pork's chop And that should happen every time. I'm not sure quite why that happens, but it does. And that means that if I go for another chop, it'll also lose to the grab, because chop is throwable. So, specifically against pork, this reset does not work if you go for another chop, or a grab. So, against pork, you can still go for those, because if they don't do grab, then it's still the normal mix-up. However, if you notice that they're grabbing you out of your mid-combo uh, reset here, what you can do is you can go for a delay jab. And if he were to mash grab there, then he would get hit by the jab there. So that's what you do if the pork knows the chop.
reset. The chop loop reset. And they decide to mash crab. Then you can jab and then, you know, get the get the full combo thing going. Also, me doing the two hits of heavy there consistently is just muscle memory. It's a reset because, you know, if they go for the jab, they get hit by it, you know, that kind of stuff. Another thing to that's somewhat worth noting is that on occasion, although it's somewhat inconsistent, uh, Pork's heavy can anti-air. It'll usually trade if you do this, although on startup there it'll work. But yeah, like that, it'll trade, usually, and then you can't really get a follow-up. So I would definitely recommend using Chop as your anti-air option. Especially if you can consistently get that timing. And look at that health bar. That did like two-thirds of his health off of an anti-air with a Chop reset in the middle. So yeah. Overall, this character is super mix-up heavy. They're the grappler. You want to get up in people's face. And you want to be ready to do those beautiful little resets. That's for if they try to attack out of it, obviously. So yeah, you just want to get up in people's face and go for those throw, or chop, or jab mix-ups. And that's basically all this character is. Once you learn the mix-ups and you feel comfortable with those, you can just do whatever, really. Whenever... I guess I didn't explicitly say it, but whenever you get someone in the corner, you can just go for heavies and then a jab, and that will leave them standing. So that's what I like to do, because if they're left standing and you ended with jab here, you're plus, which means you get to go for mix-ups between your throw, or chop, or jab, you know, the basic mix-up stuff. And if you don't like people standing, then you can just go for chop there if you get the timing just right. Or if you're not confident in your timing, you can go for the spike as well. They do just about the same damage, so... Actually, the jump does one more damage, and I'd say it's easier, so just go for the jump. If you don't want them to be left standing. Although, I believe the chop is slightly more plus. It's just a lot. It's just a bit more difficult. So yeah, that'll be more plus for you, if you go for that in the corner. It's one less damage, so if you can do it consistently, I'd recommend the chop more. But if you don't want to risk that, then just go for the jump. I think that just about covers my guide on Pork. If you guys want to know anything else, or you want me to do another character tutorial, make sure to leave that in the comments below, and I'd really appreciate it if you guys would like and subscribe. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.